It's been a while since I've talked about dashboards, so I figured it was time to make a short video on that. I've been accused of having an overpopulated or overstimulating dashboard, so I thought I'd play around with it a little bit today on this video. In addition, the newest version, 2024.6 of Home Assistant, allows you to do some extra things with these sections uh, in terms of visibility, so I thought I'd talk about that briefly as well. So let's get started. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is gonna be a slightly different video. Just gonna talk about dashboards and a few other things. Not a lot of detail here, but just a quick overview. So let's just talk a, a little bit about this right here. This is a, a new thing called Project Grace. And it's uh, this came out in March of 24, so a couple of months ago. And it talks about what Grace is and, and all of this. It's a code name for improvements to be built on top of the original Loveless dashboard that Home Assistant uh, is using. I'm not gonna go into all the detail. You can read all of this here. I'll link the blog post down below in the video description. So let me show you what my current dashboard looks like. This is the dashboard that everyone, well, not everyone, a lot of people have talked about. This is sitting on my tablet and is my daily driver dashboard. Uh, in this section here is a calendar, which I've omitted for obvious reasons, but it also it pushes all this down to the bottom, so uh, it fills this space up. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on in this dashboard. I've got all my security, door locks, everything else here, my alarm system over here, a lot of lighting, uh, temperatures, weather-related things, automation settings, um, energy usage, and all, uh, all my fans, all this stuff is on this dashboard. It's color coded to tell me what's going on at a glance, which is great. And I can look over at the dashboard and I can say, okay, well, it's getting kind of warm in the house, especially this is the room I'm in. What I wanna do is take this and see how this works with the new sections. And I've done a lot of the work beforehand, uh, before recording this video so that you can see it. Now over here is this new section. So you go from this, which is, like I said earlier, overstimulating or just very noisy from a UX design perspective, which I am not a UX designer, so I'm taking this from a comment I heard. It's really bad, incorrect, awful, terrible, etc. And then you come over here and there's a lot of clean space, a lot of area in between. It's grouped into sections. Basically what that's called is a section. All these little blocks of, of tile cards and whatnot are in here. Now this is um, easy to create, but what it does is if you notice here, and I'll show you this on the tablet, this all fits on a single tablet screen. However, when I go to this view, this no longer fits on a tablet screen. Now, before I go any farther, there's a couple things in this article and I'm gonna see if I can find it here for you real quick. Uh, here it is, let me show you here. The new sections view is experimental. Please do not build your daily dashboard on top of it yet. So, um, okay. So that means that there's probably gonna be changes. So if you build everything on your daily driver dashboards using the sections, and they go back and say, hey, here's something we wanna modify because it works better in this testing that they're doing, it could wreak, wreak havoc, wreak havoc. It could mess up your dashboard that you built. So I'm okay with that. I'm playing around. I do a lot of experimentation with Home Assistant. So I may make this as my daily driver and just see what it does. But right off the bat, obviously it doesn't fit on the screen for my tablet. So what I have to do is I have to move things around to put the most important things at the top and things that I don't need all the time can be down here at the bottom. That way also when you, you view this on your other devices, your mobile devices or whatever, it starts in this order here and goes all the way through these in a Z pattern. And again, it's talked about in how they figured out which is the best type of pattern to use. Z grid is what they're using for most of it. So when you look at this on a tablet or something smaller, uh, it will shrink it down. In fact, if I click on this now, this is the mobile view of this page. And if I scroll down, you can see it starts up here with security and goes all the way through all of those sections that I just had all the way down to the bottom. So this makes it easy to see 
what it looks like, but it auto, uh, it auto adjusts everything to fit on these different platforms. That's what makes sections really nice. And that's what makes all this stuff that they're working on really nice. Now, Project Grace is an ongoing project for Home Assistant, and they're going to continue to iterate on it and add more things. Again, that article talks a lot about it. It's a really long read, but it has a lot of good information in it. Now, how do we actually use this sections or these sections? In one of your dashboards or one of your views, you can choose a dashboard and, and do a view. You would edit the dashboard and then you would just click on a new view or add a view. And then you just click on sections, maximum number of columns. You can set that here and then you can save it. And now what it does is it's already created an unnamed section for you. You come in here and you would add a card. Now, a lot of these cards that we're going to, that we, that I've used are set up to be uh, auto adapting. Um, so that they will change sizes as they go. And the only ones that are available for this, it's going to be the button card, the towel card, and the sensor card. And if you look on the one that I've created already, uh, you'll see that. So I, if I do a towel card here and I put in uh, some sort of temperature sensor, just choose the uh, feels like temperature. And then I'll change the appearance. I'll give it a name feels like so it's shorter and save it. And now you have this thing right here. So you would populate these doing all of that. Now you could even use a sensor card because the sensor card and the button card, like I said, auto adjust the width for the thing that it's showing on. We'll do a sensor card of the same temperature. Choose that. Uh, we'll do temp again. And then for this, I'll look for the actual temperature 0015. That's my Tempest weather station, by the way. And we'll go in here and we'll find the temperature, save it. And now you have a sensor card and this shows up like this. Now let me go back over to this section here and I've created a sensor card for the CO2 level. And then I have a bunch of tile cards here. And then even down here, I've got some uh, mushroom chip cards that I've moved some things over to. Some of the stuff you can do with this uh, is the drag and drop. And some of this might be old news for those of you that pay attention and it might be new stuff for the rest of you. This allows you to do a lot more with building dashboards and make them more customized for what you want to do. In a minute ago, I talked about moving this stuff up and down so that the more important things are at the top. So let's say in the room I'm in, I want to have that front and center right beside or right behind the security section. So I'm going to move that right here. And you notice everything slides down. If you take it and move it to the side, everything will slide down as well here. And you can put it wherever you want to. You can even take these things and move them around to different areas. Let's say I want to have um, the, the front porch light, which is near the study. Just go ahead and put it in the, the study box over here. I'll just take this and I'll drag it over here and put it in the, the study room or study section. Or if I don't like it that way, then I'll just go ahead and put it back over here. So you can drag these individual cards in between these sections as well. And then you can build this out however you want to do that. Now it's just like building any other dashboard stuff. The difference is you have the drag and drop and you have uh, the ability to move these cards from one section to the other. And then you can create sections and do all kinds of different things with this. Now, some of the things I talked about already are the fact that this doesn't fit well on my tablet. And what I would end up doing then is maybe taking some of these things and I would create a section here. So let me edit the dashboard. And I want to have, um, you can see it here, I have all my temperature and humidity sensors in one area on my current dashboard. Maybe for my mobile, or not my mobile, but my, my daily driver tablet that sits on the desk here, I would create a section and I would just take all of these temperatures and I'd have to name them properly. Like right now this says temperature, but it's because it's in this section, I know it belongs to the media room. So I would take all of these and maybe drag them down to... Um, this section here, yeah, maybe, oh, I have to create the section. Uh, temperature would go down here, and now I take the temperature over here and put it here. 
Um, let's do, this is media room, so I want the temperature to come down here. I can get it to slide down. There we go. And where else do I have temperature? Uh, here's another one right here. So I think this is a kitchen temperature. And then we'll just name this room temps or something. And then for my views, I could take this and put it up here at the top where I want it to be visible all the time. And then I'm done. And now I have all my temperatures here. Of course, I'd, again, I'd have to change the name because I don't know what temp, temp, temp belongs to what here. So let's look at this on a tablet just to show you what I'm talking about. I go over here to change device. I don't even know what this, this, uh, this plugin is doing, it seems to be new on my browser. Must have added it at some point. I get on here and I look at, um, let's look at a tablet here. Do we have a tablet? I will try this. Here we go. So here it is sideways. And you can see that even now it doesn't quite fit on the dashboard. So I've got the most important things up top here. Let's zoom in on that. And then everything else I don't need on a regular basis can go down here. So it can work. I mean, you can, you can make this stuff work like this. I still think it needs a little bit more fine tuning. So it's possible, like I said, to put all this stuff that you want right up across the top here and make it all fit. Uh, you might even be able to put it in one section. Now this looks like three rows. Um, I think I set this one up for three. Let me see if I can, first of all, fix that. If I go back and edit this, and I change this, will let me change the number of rows. No, wrong thing. There we go. Uh, it says maximum number of col columns four. Let's make that six. Save it. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything. So there you go. I just wanted to talk briefly about this section view and maybe taking this right here and putting it into this. If you've played with the sections and things like that before, let me know what you think about it. Let me know uh, what your plans are, or if you have examples of these uh, tablets that you want to share or these dashboards you want to share, let me know as well. Uh, we can post those on Discord or somewhere else so we can see screenshots. I'm always curious how people build their dashboards out. It gives me inspiration and maybe uh, maybe even this right here uh, has given you some in inspiration. Uh, here's all the stuff that I view on a regular basis. And here it is in this specific view as well. All right. I know a short video, kind of a weird video, but uh, something just to uh, do something a little different uh, for you to view today. Uh, let me know again if you have any questions down in the comments below, on Discord, etc. And we will see you on the next video. After initially filming that video, I went ahead and did a couple of improvements to the dashboards here. And this is what it looks like on the tablet. By area is the original one that has everything in kind of a uh, different order for just the areas that, or the sections that they're in. And then, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I wanted to see what it would look like if I created just by entities. And so this is the entities that show up on the tablet basically in this order. So the security, the motion, and the lighting are the top three that I would look at from a um, dashboard perspective most of the time. And then those are things that change often, uh, even the fans here. Things like the outside lights only happen at nighttime. Uh, temperatures don't change that much. Humidity doesn't change that much. So those are down towards the bottom. So this is a way you could make this work with um, a dashboard with all of these entities on here. Obviously, it's up to you to make it work best for you. But for me, going from uh, something like this uh, over here and then moving over to something like a, uh, a section like this allows me to make a cleaner looking dashboard without so much noise and just keep the most important stuff at the top, but allow other stuff to be available if I want to scroll down through it. So there it is, a little bonus footage for you a little bit of a work after the fact, uh, just kind of playing around with this and seeing what, what I can do with it.